Hey there, crafty friends and stampers. How are you? This is Lori Mueller with StampinDreams.com coming to you from a bright, sunny Sunday afternoon in Lincoln, Nebraska. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm here to share my passion for paper crafting with you and to demonstrate a really cute, fun and easy thank you card. I'm going to be uh, using some new product called the Garden or Ornate Garden suite of products. There, um, it's a huge suite. Uh, there's two different stamp set bundles with dies. There's designer series paper. There's a double spool ribbon pack. There are some gems, and uh, the possibilities are amazing. Super super fun. Um, the t color tones are more uh, neutrals and uh, down to earth and it just really brings out uh, the best in uh, whatever occasion that you're creating for. It can be for birthdays, anniversaries, uh, thank you cards, uh, you name it. And I've also done some 3D projects which uh, one of them you will find in the Stamping Around the World tutorial bundle that I'm a team member of and uh, it is super cute, super adorable. So um, for anybody who needs supplies, based on the project that I'm going to show you today, you can order my online store and you will receive that 12 tutorial bundle for free. And then if you place a $50 order or more, you're gonna get an additional set of tutorials that are designed specifically around the Ornate Garden uh, to, to us suite of products so you don't want to miss out and um, I am super excited to share with you today. Hello everyone, so glad to have you here and I am coming to you to keep everybody stamping. That's another thing. I, I am very passionate about what I do and I love to share different ideas. So I have put out a challenge to my team, but also in my uh, Facebook group called uh, Stamping Dreams with Lori. So if you wanna find me on my Facebook group, Stamping Dreams with Lori, uh, I have put a color challenge out there. And uh, it is a really fun one. There's six different colors. You don't have to use them all, but it's um, exciting to kind of pick and choose and then come up with a creation. And so the challenge is for you to use those colors. Um, any, you know, you can use two of them, just one of them. You can make it monochromatic, um, however you like, whatever design, layout, whatever occasion. And then just share it on the uh, Facebook group, Stampin' Dreams with Lori. And um, it's been fun seeing what has been uh, produced. And so I am also to uh, join in with everyone using that same color challenge. There, Like I said, there are six colors and I wanna show just how easy it is to incorporate the Ornate Garden products with a color challenge. Now there are designer series papers included with this suite of products, but I'm gonna show you how I can incorporate them because the colors that are listed in the color challenge are not part of the color palette in the designer series paper. So super fun. Oh, I bet you're curious. You wanna know how I did this? So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Hello, hello everyone. So glad to have you here. Hope everyone is staying healthy and safe and um, uh, and doing all the right things and, um, and so anxious to have you here. I'm very happy to have you here. So why don't we get started with some stamping. All right. So here is the little flyer for the ornate garden suite and you can see there's all sorts of different dies and stamps and the beautiful beautiful papers and on this first one you can see all of the different items that are available with their item numbers and if you need any of the products you can contact me you can text me you can uh, send me an email at lauriedreamsstampin at yahoo.com or you can send me a private message on Facebook, either one. And then here are 
the breakdowns of the various bundles. So they have this beautiful sentiment filled stamp set. There are 19 different sayings in here and then they've tied it with this ornate border dies uh, set of dies right here. Oh my gosh, beautiful, beautiful. But I'm not gonna be using this one today. I am gonna use this stamp set and I'm also using one of the patterns out of our designer series paper. Beautiful, beautiful papers. And then we have a second set of stamps and dies. So there's this floral filled set of stamps that are six of them and they are cling mount. Then there are these dies right here. You get eight different intricate dies and they are gorgeous. So I'm gonna kind of mix and match. I'm using this stamp set with these dies today. And then you will also see a little sampling of the ornate 3D embossing folder. Beautiful, beautiful. I am also going to be using the ribbon combo, but I'm only using the terracotta tile color. And then some um, gilded, ge gilded gems are available as part of this suite. Now I did not add those to it, but it's not to say that I won't add them with this demonstration today. So beautiful products that uh, you don't want to miss out on. So I'm going to show you firsthand the um, ornate style florals is bundled with this set of dies right here. But I am using this stamp set with those dies because in the flyer, these are bundled together to save you a 10%. So you can see how gorgeous and intricate these dies are and how you can create a nice lacy edge or you can add it as a separate uh, component. But this one right here, beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to be using this particular die right here. And when you are using pieces or dies that have such intricate dies, or pieces that need to be um, punched out, you will want to use a, um, a brush you know, to remove the pieces, but you can remove them by hand as well. And the other tip that I really recommend is that you clean out all of the paper remnants that stay stuck in your die, because the next time you go to die cut it, this, these pieces or these areas, they will die cut, but they won't be as solid of a or a clean cut based on um, this can only hold so much cardstock, you know, so much um, paper in there. So you definitely want to take your brush and clean out those little pieces um, so that they have a nice clean cut for the next passing through your die cutting machine. So, so that's one little tip that. I recommend that if you want these to come out nice and clean, you want to make certain that your die is clean and free of any remnants from the previous time that you had used it. So, all right. And then I am going to share with you this particular die is one of those out of this particular set right here. So I used this one. So you can see some of the pieces, they stayed stuck to my die cutting plate. And then a number of these will need to be brushed out using my little brush um, to remove them. But beautiful, beautiful, love. And then last, I'm going to be using the beautiful 3D embossing folder. I don't know if you can kind of see the patterns in there, but you'll see it more when I use it on the cardstock. With this 3D embossing folder, you will need the blue plate, all right, and a regular big shot or the platform, the regular platform and the blue plate in order to get your um, great impression using this 3D folder. So it is very important that you have this because it is thicker than our regular cutting plate and you need that to compensate um, a good texture in the end. All right, now next I am um, going to be using the ribbon combo. Whoa, whoops. Come throw it at you using, uh, it's, there's the old olive and terracotta tile, 
and this ribbon is just beautiful very very soft and uh, forgiving for um, any types of bow tying or knots so I love that ribbon it's gorgeous the gilded gems come in three different sizes and they are um, they stand a little bit taller than our regular rhinestones and pearls so you will want to um, use those in um, areas of your creations that you can if you're mailing you want to put something over top of it so that it'll pass through the postal service machine otherwise it could give it a little hiccup and knock it out and it might get returned to you or uh, request extra postage on the other end by your recipient so um, but these are gorgeous I love 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 all right so the next is um, showing the color challenge so I have put this out like I said I uh, presented it to my team my little Stampin' Up! family and I also posted it on my Stamping Dreams with Lori Facebook page and there are six colors there's terracotta tile grapefruit grove mango melody so saffron coastal cabana and Bermuda Bay but I am only focusing on these three right here and um, if you kind of eastery but yet um, nice and uh, earthy toned as well and I'm going to show you how I did that using part of the ornate garden designer series paper suite so these are you know not using any of those colors they're more than mint macaron old olive um, terracotta tile uh, I think it's soft suede and um, yeah I think those are all the colors but on the back side you have some foils some that are you know you can add color to them or they already have a colored background such as the mint macaron old olive these two are not foil based uh, or have any foil impressions on them this is the terracotta tile kind of reminds me of a ceiling tile in the old age in the old days and then this one's a two-tone old olive pear pizzazz pattern so this one's similar to that pattern right here but it just doesn't have any foil tied to it so you can implement these into this particular color palette but I'm going to show you how I'm going to incorporate this one right here because it gives me the opportunity of leaving it blank or by adding my own color so fun 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 so let's get started this is the card that I created using a number of the products in the Ornate Garden Suite. I'm using, like I said, the Ornate Thanks stamp set right here. And I love how you have big and bold and then a nice cursive handwriting or handwritten message that you can incorporate into uh, creating two-tone colors. I mean, it's makes it super easy that you can stamp them both um, in separate colors I'm using one of the um, ornate dies that um, I had shared with you so I'm going to use this particular one right there and they call that the ornate layer I'm using the gold foiled designer paper that has the larger floral but then you can see that I have used the beautiful ornate floral 3d embossing folder my colors are terracotta tile coastal cabana and then I snuck in just a little bit of so saffron because it just needed a third color to help it pop and um, bring out some different uh, focal um, direction for your eyes that you don't get so much uh, gold and you don't get so much of the coastal cabana uh, popping out at you but a third color is always a nice complement to any creation all right so to get started we need our pieces of cardstock that um, are whisper white thick measuring at five and a half inches five and a half by eight and a half and then it's scored at four and a quarter right here I am using a piece of coastal cabana that measures five and an eighth by two and five eighths 
All right, I'm using the foil lined, and this is the back side of that designer series paper that measures five inches by two and a half. Terracotta tile piece that measures five and an eighth by one and three quarters. You're gonna need uh, some scrap, Coastal Cabana, that will die cut that ornate layer. A piece of Whisper White, regular, that is three and seven eighths inches by one inch. And then I have a strip of So Saffron that measures four and a quarter by a half inch. All right, so those are all my pieces that I'm needing right now. And we can go ahead and do a couple of different things. We'll fold and burnish our score line on our Whisper White thick cardstock. And I like to burnish on both sides. All right, next we can go ahead and adhere the designer series paper directly to our Coastal Cabana. And I'm bringing in my liquid glue. And I use liquid glue for many reasons. Uh, Nebraska weather is um, more conducive to liquid glue, allowing me to make certain that my projects stay together. But I also like the wiggle room time that I have. Um, if you're using a tear and tape or even sometimes snail, once you set it in place, it's really, you know, sometimes it can be very difficult to uh, uh, move around. All right, so I'm going to set these two pieces aside and bring in my die cutting machine because I want to first emboss my terracotta tile. So let me bring in that. And as I mentioned, for the 3D embossing folders, you really need the base platform and the blue plate. All right, so I'm gonna set my terracotta tile cardstock piece. Now here there's no directions, so you could have it go sideways or kitty wampus. You don't have to worry about making certain that it's um, straight up and down um, because there are no directions such as lines or uh, grids of that sort. So you'll run this through your machine. And you don't have to run it through a second time. It gives a great impression the first time around. So let's pull that out and show you just how beautiful that is. Terracotta tile really makes it um, show off all of the great impressions. Now the one thing about design, um, 3D embossing folders, you do get two choices. You get the raised part, or if you wanted to flip it over, you can get an inset part where all of the flowers are shown in a different light um, because they are depressed. You know, the raised part is on the back side. So you get a choice, which is kind of cool. You get a two for one out of one folder. All right, so I'm going to set that aside because I'm done with this particular plate. But now for die cutting, I am bringing in my magnetic platform. I have one cutting plate that's down, that's next in line. I'm going to bring in my Coastal Cabana, and it measures about, I think it was five, five inches, because I needed something for the width of this particular die. And because it's magnetic, you know, I, I'm okay with it not shuffling around. And then I want to add another cutting plate on top of that. I'm going to run it through and it's going to go, I should have went more of an angle so that there wasn't such a hump for it to come through. And then I'm going to bring it back through this side. Okay. Now one thing I should have mentioned is if you put it at an angle, then your machine has less um, abruption of that, you know, th think of this as a big speed bump that it's trying to go, the rollers are trying to go over all at once. But if you have it gradually come in, then you don't get all of that, um, that noise and rickrack. So I'm going to pull this out of here. And 
produce, oh, see this just came out nice and clean, but I am going to want to bring my brush in and clean all those pieces out because as I said, the more paper that gets crammed in there, the less likely the um, dye will cut cleanly. You may have some areas that you have to um, kind of hand snip out of there, but um, and also the brush will bring some um, ability to get these all knocked out of there a little bit faster. But to save time today, isn't that just gorgeous? I went ahead and pre-cut one and already cleaned out all the pieces from there so we don't have to um, watch me go through that. But you definitely need a brush to help you get uh, these all out. Or a lot of times I like to just take my scissors and um, or your take your pick tool you can do that as well. Take your um, take your pick tool and poke those out individually if you do not have the brush. So, and I just kind of rub my finger across as I'm poking it, and they kind of stick and and then I pull them away that way. So you can do it in many different fashions. But this take your pick tool is only ten dollars. The brush that adds on to your take your pick tool is nine. So you're getting a great deal for. Um, less frustration. So I'll go ahead and put that aside. Next I'm going to do some stamping. Let's bring in um, our thank you and the sentiment here. I have one little tip and I'm going to show it to you because once you, one thing that really um, makes me nervous is if I lay this down and it goes, because with the photopolymer you can actually round them or you know make them fit whatever surface you have so to help me uh, make certain that I have it in a straight line I like to lay my my sentiment down right um, on my surface and then take my block and pick it up this direction like that and then I know it's straight across now it may not be straight on my block but that's okay because I can see through and see where I'm positioning. It doesn't have to be straight on my block. And then it works even more uh, wonderfully with these that are really slim and slender. And so I just like to you know, lay it out naturally and go ahead and pick up just like that. And then I know, and you can use the grid paper as well now I may not have gotten that laid down, but if you kind of pick up and let it naturally lay down, and then you can check it out on your grid paper. Now see, I um, I think I warped it. So let's see if I can get this. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. And then just use your grid line to determine if it's straight across that way. So, all right. Now, the other thing I was thinking of, um, sometimes I like to have a card with a sentiment that is a darker tone than one of the other cards or one of the other colors that's in here. And I thought about bringing Bermuda Bay in to do my sentiment, but I tested it out and it was way overpowering on my eyes. So I decided to stay with Coastal Cabana with my thank you. So that's something to think about as well. I'm going to bring in my Coastal Cabana and because I can see through my clear block, give it tap 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 I don't need to squish down on that foam and I'm going to give it a slight border towards the top and center it left to right just like that give it a nice pressure and then peel away like that lovely okay next I'm gonna bring in my second sentiment and I love adding two-tone colors for sentiments. Sometimes if the sentiment is all in one piece, I'll use my Stampin' Write markers to emphasize a particular word that I'm wanting to concentrate. Um, and so that's a little bit more tedious, but I love that these are all separated so I don't have to worry about that. 
and then again I'm just you know tap 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 literally the weight of the block if even less and I am going to hug the top of my letters close to the thank you and let's see if I can do that and then center left to right and because my sentiment is a little bit narrower or quite a bit narrower it will have the tendency on this large block to want to rock so you want to be very careful that you go straight down and pick up uh, straight back up all right looks good okay and close that up all right next I did give my uh, so saffron piece a little bit of a banner end cut so it wasn't so squared off like everything else and I'm using the tailored tag punch to help me with that. Whoops, I slipped there. And I'm just centering it like that. Bring in this piece right here on the other end. And like that. See how cool that is? You can get a nice, even piece um, die or cut on either end. I'm going to add some liquid glue here, just a little strip is all I need. I don't need to go all the way across. And I'm centering it in the middle of my sentiment. So I can flip it over and see the even white space on either side. And then I want to have even space on that. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere this directly to my little lace die. All right, so I'll go ahead and do this. So I hope everyone has been stamping. Um, I'm trying to, I've got a number of projects that have been waiting for completion. So I'm taking advantage of this extra time that I have. Well, I don't know if I have extra time, but I've been making a lot of soups lately. It's been cold. We did get some snow this last week. Um, not as much as, you know, like South or North Dakota. They got like 11 inches. <laughs> so I didn't get that much. All right. And, um, but yeah, I've made chili, I made homemade potato soup, I've made, next on the line is um, broccoli, broccoli cheddar soup. So you have to tell me if you have a favorite recipe that you like. But So this is how my sentiment is going to look. Next I want to start assembling my card. I am going to overlay, now this was kind of my first forethought and that's why my pieces uh, are centered like that but I'm going to have this layer tucked under this layer but I don't want to glue it directly to my card just yet because I want to add my ribbon but I'm one that I don't like my ribbon to be wrapped around my card because this is going to get caught in some point or another so I am kind of uh, fiddling with uh, my creation here and let's see center I'm giving I'm looking for a nice even border on both sides here and on on all three sides then I'm going to bring in my liquid glue because I know I have an extra overlap here I'm going to add a liquid glue and liquid glue is really important when it comes to 3d embossing because I don't want to have my adhesive um, pressed in you know because depending on the pressure that you put on it you could decompress that gorgeous pattern so you want to use liquid glue if at all possible all right so I'm tucking that in like that so that's going to be my layer the reason I'm going to, I'm treating it like this, is I'm going to bring in my terracotta tile ribbon, and I'm just snipping off a little extra on the ends right there. I'm going to bring in my tear and tape to help secure it into place. Now, my sentiment's going to be covering the vast majority of it, but this will help me get started with 
I'm not needing to need <laughs> five extra hands to help me put this together. So I am going to add some on the very end of my ribbon there and another piece right here. All right, so I'm using tear and tape. Love, love, love that stuff. And I'm peeling away this center one. And that's the part that is going to be one of my hands. I'm centering it over top um, because I, I like to cover up my seams a lot of times. I know that seems kind of, um, I mean, it's, it, it is finished off, but I, yeah, I like to finish them off even more. So I'm going to center it off like that. Oh, come on. My hands are, there we go. And then I can just peel off my end right here. Oop. Like that. And wrap it behind. Peel off this end. Liquid glue could be used, but it's messy. Um, you'll end up getting more glue on your fingers than you do on your on your project. So, uh, tear and tape or even snail. You could use snail and do the same thing. All right, now I'm going to bring in my adhesive again, and I'm going to plant this on the front of my card. And I do go over my ribbon pieces so that they stay intact and don't um, raise up off of my card base. And then I can center this in place, just like that. Make certain I have it nice and squared off on all four sides. Beautiful. Okay. All right, next. And the last thing is to add our sentiment. So I want to be able to straddle my ribbon piece because with the double layer of designer paper and cardstock and then the ribbon, it tends to um, pick up a little bit more. So I want to make certain that I straddle over that ribbon piece and only add dimensionals across the top. And because our um, main dimensionals are um, a little bit bigger than the space that I have between my ribbon and um, that I want the ribbon to sit in here, I am using halves of our regular Stampin' Dimensionals. I could use um, our minis, but I, I would have to be using a lot of minis, so I am just using halves because this is giving me a nice rectangular shape and allows the ribbon to flow right down through the center. So let me go ahead and remove those backings. And they come off really easy. Yay. And oh, make certain I have it right side up. And then I also used my little sew saffron strip to center my ribbon piece and then center it left and right and voila those are two beautiful cards using the colors that i had chosen out of this uh, sequence of terracotta tile coastal cabana and so saffron and I used our garden or ornate garden designer series paper. So um, even though it doesn't have these colors in that designer series paper, this gold foil really opens up the door to, um, to be able to do that. So I am hoping that you will join with me in this color challenge. And then when you do, put the hashtag keep stamping on there so that we can uh, find all of those that have joined in with us on this color challenge and um, provide inspiration for everyone. All right, so let me uh, flip around here. So, so what'd you think? 
pretty cool, right? So uh, color challenge. It uh, can be open-ended to whatever card stocks, designer series paper, inks, uh, accessories, you know, ribbons and things like that of your choice. And then put the hashtag keep stamping in there. And I am looking forward to seeing your creations. Now the prize patrol uh, for the uh, session two weeks ago goes out to Janet Anderson. So Janet, congratulations. I know where um, I have your address and I know where you live. So I will be sending you a nice little package of um, Stampin' Up! products for you to play with. So I'm hoping that uh, you all have a great day and keep stamping and um, I cannot wait to see what you create using this uh, beautiful color uh, sequence um, pattern or this color combos um, and like I said it can be as many of them as you want to implement into one creation or it can be you know just one make it monochromatic um, that's uh, a great idea for a card or um, a gift box or covering of a notebook or notepad um, and then send out those cards. So until next time, thank you for joining me. If you need any products, please be sure to shop my online store at stampandreams.com. Click the shop now button and uh, you will receive a wealth of uh, wonderful projects that you can create um, because it's filled with full color images, measurements, and all that good stuff. Plenty to keep you stamping for a long time to come. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time.